Hey, Kent Smith. Hey, hey, Kent, it's Ben Alvers. I didn't see you there. Great to see you, Ben. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for stopping by, friend. <laughs> well, it's not, not that often that we get to see each other anymore these days. Oh, it makes my heart happy. It's great yeah. to see and hear you. I wish I could smell you. Well, just wait. Just wait. I'm working on some smells uh, over the last several weeks that uh, you, you're going to love it. Yeah, what have you been up to? Uh, dude, I feel so tired, but so inspired, right? Like I, I have been teaching at KU still. I've been excited to get our classes at the Lawrence Art Center online. I've been uh, teaching a Blooms and Botanicals class, which is kind of watercolor and colored pencil. And it's a great time of year for it. Typically, we'd be outside looking at all these blooms. But at the same time, I think people are really appreciating the outside a little more right now. You know, these little breaks to walk the dog or these like quiet strolls with nobody else around. And, and you are noticing maybe new growth or small details we, we haven't noticed when we're in our busy to go mode, you know, just do checklist mode. So uh, right. it's been really heartwarming to meet up with people on Friday mornings and, and talk watercolor and flowers and blooms and growth. And uh, it's been really inspiring. And at the same time, I'm exhausted just because it's all new. Transitions are hard, right? Like, yeah, yeah, no joke. And uh, you know, the the idea of noticing things is kind of what this whole project is about. Is you know, the the project is called Artists and the Art that They Live With, and um, and I I really like the idea of of talking with fellow artists about what they surround themselves with and. Um, and for or for anybody, artist or not, to to take a look and take check of what they what they surround themselves with in their home. And now that we're all in those places, um, it's maybe a, an opportunity to 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 take another look at things um, that we've surrounded ourselves with. So, oh, I loved it when you when you emailed me. Um, it made me even kind of like, well, we're artists, so we get a little self conscious, like the idea of like not just showing artwork, but actually being the person talking in a camera is it like, there's always that fun uncomfortability. Um, but also just having to own feelings. And my artwork around my house is, it definitely was a beautiful check-in on like how personal it all is. Um, what a travel stamp it is like on old luggage or on old cartoons or movies where you'd see all those stickers on a piece of luggage or these time capsules or these these touchstones of memory to go back instantly to a place or a location uh, or a feeling, even just a feeling of, of something. Uh, it was a really a great gift you gave me getting to walk around my house and talk to my wife and son and just be like, what do you guys think? Should it be this piece? Should it be this piece? Uh, and then there was also that recognition of what an embarrassment of riches that is, that I've been fortunate enough to grab things at the right moments. You know, I'm not a super, uh, I'm an artist, so like I got I got to trade for stuff. I gotta I gotta buy stuff at bargains. I gotta figure. I gotta get emerging people or just friends work and right. um, and it just made me feel so lucky and so wealthy and so rich to have these things surrounding me, especially during this time. You know, keeping my soul alive, keeping my spirit up. Yeah, yeah, that's really great to hear. And and uh, I'm I'm in. We're all in it together, right? We're all in the same boat. Um, but it almost I gotta say you the the scene behind you almost looks like it's a green screen and it's been uh composed in some other place the but virtual is, backgrounds the is, the, this, the is this a real background is this real life yeah we're, this is real life uh uh which also by the way is something that my wife likes to crack up is one of the most common um faces she sees on people when interacting with me especially for the first time is kind of the like is this real life or is this guy for real like that type like uh so that was great to hear you say that uh is it this is real life this is my real life this is my studio space um this is uh i have a traditional media station over here i've got my digital stuff here i'm actually lucky enough to kind of have a build space in the garage and, and other spaces too but this is kind of my my hub right now especially as we've been teaching online uh, and doing things like that. And so I do like to surround myself, like you said, artwork, right? So, I mean, I've got, I've got like uh, an iron giant over here and this is a spacesuit my son and I built for a Halloween and uh, based on Lost in Space, if any of you have seen that new remake of that, that's super great. But you'll see toys and artwork all over. I, 
I, I toe the line of, of maybe a, a little hoarderish or collectorish, right, at, at different points, but there's other things I keep pretty clean. So like, it's just more along those, again, memory touch points, things that make me feel a feeling, things that make me ho maybe hold a memory or some part of even an earlier version of myself, right? Mm -hmm. Like that eight-year-old or that five-year-old or Good. there's magic in that. And so I try to grab those when I can and I do find it inspiring to surround myself with it. Well, for this, this assignment, you've got to pick one. So what is it that you want to talk about? Right, right. So maybe the biggest and the best. How about, how about this dude right up here that's just looming over me, uh, scaring me maybe a little bit. I've always loved monsters. I've always especially identified with King Kong and Godzilla and the old universal monsters, the classics. Um, and uh, this piece, uh, that idea of a misunderstood monster is always great to me too. The idea of a force of nature or like, well, what did you expect when you picked up my man and brought him to New York City? You know, like this, <laughs> is this really his fault? You know, and so as a kid, I really identified with kind of some of these, these misunderstood monsters and, and maybe just nature being nature. And um, this piece in particular, it's over seven feet tall. Uh, it's, a, it's from the 1976 uh, remake of King Kong, uh, which was uh, done by Dino De Laurentiis and is, is full of many, many examples of being both a great movie and a terrible movie. And it was fraught with some conflict between studios. And so there's just awesome story to it as well. Mm -hmm. But the artist who painted this and painted uh, the King Kong posters for that movie. Uh, there's also ones of him like on top of the World Trade Center, which is kind of a trip to look at right now and stuff. And, um, but Old Kong uh, was painted by this artist named John Berkey, who also painted other major touchstones in my childhood, like the original Star Wars posters um, and different, um, let me, uh, oh, host tabled screen share and I could jump over and show you some of his work but I'll shoot some JPEGs to to Ben and besides this image we can show you know some of these original Star Wars movies uh, he, he posters uh, and concept art that was very expressionistic as well there was really blocky and cubic shapes uh, and motion feeling mm -hmm. of motion and not just a static uh, caricature or portrait um, he in addition to doing King this might interest you Ben he in addition to painting uh, King Kong posters and Star Wars posters, he's also the person who, who painted Fat Elvis stamp, or, or the old Elvis, excuse me, <laughs> old Elvis, uh, the postage stamp. Remember when they released that? It was a big this deal. This conversation is over. It's the <laughs> older Elvis. <laughs> and Elvis. so John Berkey is the painter of <laughs> wow. that, of that okay. old postage stamp. And so he's a really great <laughs> painter and concept artist that inspires even a lot of where my heart lies in my own work still. Monsters and alternate realities and things that are just slightly askew. Um, and uh, the fact that he informed so much of my childhood, but I didn't know his name until I was older. You know, mm -hmm. you, he, he, he was up there with Ralph McQuarrie and, and Mobius and, and, and Giger on Jodorowsky's Doom. And he was one of these like, he's, you know, he's painting uh, spaceships that were not so even clunked down with actual science, but looked more like manta rays and looked more like swimming, you know, beautiful creatures and uh, popular science back in the day of like Buckminster Fuller and all these like domed glass, you know, right. cities and the future, you know, <laughs> that, oh, he tapped into that magic part of me and I would stare at these things for hours and hours, even though I didn't even know who made them. I was just into the characters. I was into the world build. I was into the story. And then later I find out, oh, this guy's named John Berkey. And people even sometimes refer to some kind, some concept art as Berkarian, right? Like, and so he's well right. enough known within that circle uh, that it's a, he's a really big dude. And, and um, yeah, it was just a great like kind of way for me to pick a piece that gave modern day touch point of artwork I still make, artwork I still play with these ideas of larger than life concepts and alternate realities and cryptids and monsters and ghost stories and, things that I love to play with in my artwork. Um, but it also was not only speaking about me today, but it shared with you little five-year-old and eight-year-old Kate. You know, this, this, this was my childhood. This is who I am in so many ways. 
Uh, and even the making of this poster, it's in two pieces and it came in a tube and it was made to make, it's more of like a wallpaper material. You know, was, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of them left anymore because they were maybe just glued right. to the back of doors or to walls. And, and so it's just a, it's a product of a bygone era, uh, mailing off box tops and getting secret decoder pins and stuff. This is who I am as a, at, the, at my core, you know? And so uh, this seemed like the piece to talk about amongst all the other art pieces. Uh, this was the one for today. And so how did you, uh, you know, when you, you started to learn more about who was making these, these pieces, these paintings or images that you loved, um, was it when you were in school? Did you have anybody that was sort of educating or, or linking you to like how and, and how and who? I'm so glad you asked me that, Ben. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, uh, no, I, I think that's great. It was actually, once I started to code break the world, once I started to like, I, I'd been in school, this was, and, I, and then actually I'm really glad you, you asked me that. As far as like the time travel thing and me being both an old man loving this and a five-year-old version of me loving this, this was actually given to me by the person who first taught me to draw. This was given to me by Tom Fisher, uh, who was both a uh, lawyer and DA and illustrator, you know, and he was everything. And he was a father of a best friend. And we grew up together and he taught me how to tell story. He taught me how to express emotion. He taught me how to, and so that is extra value in this for me, the idea that it came from him. And he too is this amazing, he taught me how to tell story. He taught me how to uh, collect. He taught me how to find value in things other people were throwing away even. And so he, was probably the first person to tell me, oh, that's John Berkey's work. And as a young, uh, uh, I guess, uh, flash over substance punk kid or whatever, I promptly like immediately forgot who the artist was and then like rediscovered it years later through my own, like, uh, oh, I like Reynold Brown's work. Like I mentioned earlier, Giger and Moby and just kind of like looking at these science fiction painters and finding my way to John Berkey's Star Wars posters and slowly connecting the dots back to this piece and being like, holy crap, I ha that, that's an artist I love and didn't know I love, you know, it, enough so that it's on my wall and I've carried it from city to city and home to home and like, and yet I didn't know. And I'm so glad to know it's a hard thing to look up on Google. If you just Google these, they never have his name. They just, because oh. there was none of his name on the posters. It's all just like copyright uh, Dino De Laurentiis Corp, you know, or copyright Paramount or EKO is actually who it is. Um, so like, yeah, uh, it took a long time, but I finally connected the dots. And I guess that's some of the reward as well, is that it was a treasure laying right under my nose and I didn't know it. That's awesome. The, the treasure under your nose. And also like the, the layers of connectivity that you have with, with, with that, that object, that, that piece that's on your wall between your own personal history and then your own, your, you know, your interest in, science fiction and, and film and, and animation and uh, yeah, all kind of bundled up in one thing. That's, that's pretty cool. That's a great story. Yeah, thank you. You know, I brainstormed a lot of great pieces. I was really grateful to have those in the house, but this one did seem like the node or the hub. This one seemed like the connected, you know, everything kind of led back to this, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it looks great coming out of the top of your head too in this little film. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, it was great to see you and I really appreciate you taking the time and it's really, really good to hear your voice and see your face. I, I agree and I look forward to smelling you at some point, but uh, <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Ben, and stop by anyways, anytime. We, we can talk about art anytime. Looking forward to it. All right, man, take care. Take care, bye. Bye.